Shalom people of God, it's your brother Travis and welcome to part 2 of signs of a spiritual um, spiritual oppressed house or life and in this video we're gonna finish this up and also talk about how to fight back how to fight back because let me tell you people it is very important to learn how to fight back and fight back in that way because the devil does not play I've heard of stories of people when through certain spiritual attacks and spiritual oppression and they never and I cannot say that they never really fight back but many people never really fight back fully and the devil conquer them physically no people died because of spiritual warfare no many people I've even heard of stories of people having series of dreams which, which we're gonna talk about in this one having series of dreams and then certain things that happen in their life and they never understand spiritual warfare and then eventually that person died but when you have a conversation with their relative their relative can tell you that they, they was telling them about certain dreams that they used to have but they never know how to pray against that dream or they never know what to do and and so forth and eventually they, they, they got sick they got they, they got sick unexplainably um, doctors cut them from left right and center and they cannot find the true um, the true source of the sickness and eventually they died because they never learned how to really fight back so it's so important for you guys how to know for you to guys to know how to really fight back from the biblical level don't let these false prophets and seed sowing ministers tell you any foolishness you cannot give anybody any money and win a spiritual warfare no devil no demon will ever look if you even give me money no demons is gonna look and say oh my god they just gave brother Travis some money so we better run nothing like that you have to develop your own relationship with God and fight the way oh God designed you to fight you need to learn that because if you follow all these false prophets in these in these last days you are gonna fight a losing battle you're gonna lose your money you're gonna lose your time and eventually many of you will lose your very life learn it Jesus Christ way and no other way Jesus Christ is the only way the only truth and the only life so you have to follow that man and his ways which is the word right because in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God that same word came and manifest as flesh died for our sins that we may be remitted from sins and shame and destruction from the enemy the enemy comes to rob kill steal and destroy but christ came that we may have life and not only have life eternal but also life more abundantly in this time too so people what i'm going to teach you here probably some of the things are not going to sit well with you especially when we talk about sin but it's very important to talk about that part too so do not run from the truth because only the truth can set you free. I'm just setting that, I'm just setting that foundation from right here before I even get started. I'm just talking about that right now before we get started because many people out there fighting a losing battle and thinking that they can pay their way through spiritual warfare. You can't do that. Your money cannot save you. Your money cannot save you when it comes to spiritual warfare. Not at all. Even in your own life, when it comes to your soul, your money can't save you. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about following the ways of the Lord no money no horse nothing at all can save you but Jesus Christ of Nazareth so let's get started so in the last video we were going through the signs of a spiritual oppressed house which I'm gonna cover back quickly and then continue on on the rest and we're gonna talk about how to fight back and on the part when it comes to how to fight back I want you to become radical when it comes to your fight it's good to know about the signs but what's more important is you fighting back okay people so we're gonna finish what we're talking about the reason why um the, it got cut off the phone overheated and then it got cut off but nevertheless let's get started so the number one sign of a spiritual oppressed house our life is sleep paralysis um, less energy, so you start to sleep a lot, you start finding yourself sleeping, getting tired, um, feeling sick, the unexplainable, the, the unexplainable sickness, 
um, things falling out of your hands or mishaps happening constantly you start getting clumsy start moving clumsy strange behaviors from pets or animals you know you have no motivation <clears throat> you have to go, actually force yourself to go and work you know strange smell especially when it comes to the women and their private part having the strange smell or uh, you have the cigar smell you know people who at work altars they, they they would blow a cigar on the altar and so forth and so you smell that cigar smell unusual emotional swings you know like you get angry out of nowhere or you get sad out of nowhere or you get depressed out of nowhere or you get confused out of nowhere these are all signs of spiritual oppression upon your life or over your house objects moving moving of objects this is deep spiritual warfare this is when a, a presence of a De a strong demon is present I just thought this is the, see things shifting in, in your house or you see something you, you place something right here and when you come back you don't see it there and you search on the whole place and then when you go back to the same place you find it back there again um, unusual sounds is, is another one uh, when you have unusual sounds in your house or knocking on your door or something walking on the house top or you hear somebody call your name you know these are all signs as well our next thing also is appliances going crazy so you can have your phone to start acting up out of nowhere your fridge start acting up <clears throat> you know your fans probably stop working and when you take out your fan and carry the fan to some someone else's house it works even your car can start malfunctioning because of spiritual things people is very very serious um and where we where we stopped was monitoring spirits and i want to talk about monitoring spirits in detail and i mentioned about the cats in the last video so for all those who never saw the last video go and look at part one i'm gonna talk about the birds in this video i'm gonna talk about the black birds so people will spirits will monitor you through these animals and I mentioned the, the cat story and I'm going to mention the bird story. Whenever you see a black bird monitoring you, is that yours? Like a black bird monitoring, black birds will come around and monitor you. But the dangerous part about them monitoring you is that they can come also with curse. They can come also with curse words. So, for instance, um, they're on the line and you're trying to run them, right? You're trying to run them and, and, and um, all of a sudden they fly off and they start making these sounds, these bird sounds like bah, bah, bah. What you don't know is that on a spiritual level, they are levying curse against you. They are sending arrows against you. Just by their sounds. When you, see them, when you hear them fly off and make their sounds, these are also curses. Being levied also against you too so you have to be very careful when it comes to that so this is another sign of spiritual oppression is that monitoring spirits will be coming like will, will, will be coming to monitor your every move to know your, your ins and outs your routine and all that for your destruction all right um the next sign of, of spiritual um, oppression in your life or house is that you start sensing something touching you so you sense a touch like some somebody's touching you but nobody's really touching you you're sensing touches that's another high level of um spiritual oppression um the next one also is the spider web now it's called a spider web effect have you ever find yourself walking in your house or even in your in your in your yard or in your room and you start feeling like there's this spider web on your face and you're like but then when you really check it there's no real web really there or some of the time these webs are actually there but they just come out of nowhere the spider web effect is a spiritual oppression people when you have that spider web effect or you feel like spider web, what spider web is on your face that's spiritual oppression do not be fooled it's actually a spiritual oppression also when you feel like a butterfly is in your ears or like a, a little bat is in your ears there's no bat in your ears but don't live in your ears so how come you're feeling like something is flapping in your ears like a like a bat or a butterfly that's also another sign of spiritual oppression too 
So when you feel these things, just know that something spiritual is happening. Uh, the next sign of spiritual oppressed house or life is the feeling of a strange presence. This presence does not feel holy like any holy angel or the presence of God. It feels very eerie, weird. It feels very strange. Sometimes it can feel very evil as well. Whenever you feel that evil presence, just know that there's a spiritual oppression going on in that house or probably in your life. A next sign of spiritual oppression is unusual temperature changes. So you see, they get hot, like really hot, or they get extremely cold. Have you heard before? They get extremely hot or extremely cold. The presence of a different, of a demonic entity can cause your body to react in certain way because what people, most people don't know is that your body is also an electrical thing too. Your body is very sensitive to different beings. Your body is very, very sensitive um, to the atmosphere, both physically and spiritually. So when the presence of a evil presence come amongst you, there are times when your body react with, with, with getting very hot or also very get, are getting very cold. The next sign that we have here of, of a spiritually oppressed house, our spiritually oppressed life, is that you start to have foolish or petty arguments with your child or with your spouse have you heard it before you you start to get into some stupid arguments some simple things you guys start arguing over simple things you can't even have a decent conversation without you start getting into arguments and sometimes fight this is where sometimes people are setting um jeans against you setting demonic force against you and causing division in your house causing confusion in your house causing you to fight out of nowhere for petty arguments and when you finish that argument and you really start thinking about it when you go off back into that sound mind i start thinking about it like the argument that argument was not even necessary that argument was not even necessary that's when you know it is spiritual when some i always say this when something does not make some sense logically it has a spiritual prototype behind it so when you see you guys are having this back and forth argument you you, you argue over the pen you argue over the phone you argue over paper <laughs> just know that there's something spiritual happening there what people need to know in relationships in marriages is that there, there, there are people out there that, that will envy you for your relationship envy you for your marriage it is so sad that there, there, there are actually people out there that makes your life and what's going on in your life a problem to them they make what who you talk to a problem to them it can be your mother it can be your father it can even be a friend it can be a sister it can be a brother these people even strangers these people make your life a problem to them anybody who you talk to is a problem to them they don't want to see you happy they don't want to see you fulfilled in any way and they will work with off of you and cause you to lose the good relationship that you have the good marriage that you have people are very evil out here people and so that's why that's why i'm saying that you have to become a radical when it comes to your spiritual life because these people are attacking you on a spiritual level and affecting your life on a physical level so you need to become strong through christ on the spiritual level and so so you can maintain your physical life from these wicked people who are working with the enemy and for the enemy so do not be fooled there are people out there who will envy you for your relationship envy you for what you have and start working against you start start um putting bodily fluids around your house in your place start um using all type of oil using enchantments words all those stuff and stuff going to read a man to do this going to read a man to do that sometimes these same people you're very kind to and you give them your money and they take that money and do something with it or sometimes you give them something um, um not even monetary but even just a gift and they will take that and use it against you as well do not be fooled and these are people who can be very close to you too so when you start having these petty arguments in the in the relationship petty arguments even with your children <clears throat> just know that this is something spiritual and you must be in prayer all right and the last but not the least i leave this i leave this one for last because 
is like the icing on the cake. This is like the confirmation when it comes to spiritual oppression of your life or in your house. Is dreams. You start to have dreams. You start dreaming. The dream confirm everything. Sometimes the dream even show you who is the one doing what they're doing against you. Sometimes you see these people hiding from you. Sometimes you see these people running from you. Sometimes you see these people attacking you. Sometimes you see these people shooting you. Sometimes you see these people having trying to have sex with you. Or even succeeding having sex with you. Sometimes you have, you have a lot of dreams. But your dreams confirm what's going on in your life. And you have to pay attention to these dreams. Because as I said earlier, I heard a story of this man that had a series of dreams. Always dreaming certain things. But he never paid his dreams any mind. And little by little, this man started to get sick. Little by little, things in his life just start to go haywire. Little by little, he start to start to, his life just started to de deteriorate. And he's having these dreams consistently. And then one day, and while he was having these dreams, he was only talking to a relative about the dreams. Like, you know, I had this weird dream the other day. And, you know, he continued to just tell him about the dream. But he was never taking the dream, not taking the dream serious until one day that person died. And the person that he was telling the dream to was relating the dreams to um, a pastor, which I heard a dream, which I heard a story from. And the pastor realized that all this time this man was going through spiritual warfare, spiritual oppression, and never knew how to fight back. Never knew that, that these dreams were signs of what's going on in his life spiritually and not how to manifest physically. And eventually that man died. That's why you have to be very careful. When you have these dreams, you can pray against these dreams. Alright, so these are all signs. So here I'll finish up the signs of spiritual, a spiritually oppressed house and, and life. They can be more. They can be more, but these ones are, very, are standout glory and very detailed. So now we're going to get into how to fight back. How to fight back the enemy. How to push back against the enemy and his attacks. How to push back against these witchcraft. How to push push back against these demonic forces, and I want and I want to start off with <coughs> um, First Corinthians chapter glory, <laughs> First Corinthians chapter ten, um, verse thirteen, and it says here. So it's First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. It says here, there is no temptation taking you. But such as come unto man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will but will with temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now the scripture is saying here that there is no temptation but such as come unto man. What you are going through, probably going through right now when it comes to the spiritual warfare and so forth, it is nothing new. Many people are going to watch this video and say, Ah, oh, what you say is what I've experienced. So this is nothing new. But what you need to know is that even though this is nothing new, God is faithful. So you have to turn to God to help you to get over these things. You have to turn to, to, turn to the faithful one to, <clears throat> to help you to conquer these forces. Because you can't attack spiritual things physically. You have to come against them by the greatest, by the greatest spirit of all, which is our Lord. We're going to also read Psalms. Psalms 46 verse 1. Psalms 46 verse 1. And it's 46. <laughs> it says here, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So even though you're going through these troubles, through this spiritual warfare, God is a refuge. God is your strength. God is your very present help. So you need to start believing that because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because, because anybody who comes to God must believe that he is, that he is what? That he is God. And that he is whatever he says he is. Matter of fact, he says right here that he is a refuge. He is your strength. And he is your very present help in time of trouble. So do you believe that God is? And also the Bible says that you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So you must be seeking him in spirit and in truth. So this is nothing new, but you have to know that you have to fight it the way your God wants to fight. So the first thing 
the first way that you that you fight back and fight back in victory this probably not gonna sit well with most people because people do not like to hear about sin but let me tell you straight up you have to forsake your sinful acts you can pray you can read the bible and these things will do something do not get me wrong you have people out there in sin when they pray things still happen but to have the full victory to fight fully to have God close to you to fight with God, you must overcome your own sinful acts. You must stop this conscious, presumptuous, deliberate sinning. Sometimes the reason why the devil conquer even younger people, the younger people who are very ambitious, is because they have legal grounds for the devil to work in their life. Sin gives legal grounds. The Bible says sin separates you from God. Glory to God. And you cannot fight the devil without God so when you stay out there sinning consciously presumptuously over and over and over again you're put you 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 you're distancing yourself away from God so how can you fight the devil when you're distancing yourself from God one of the main ways of how you conquer witchcraft people is to live for God one of the main way you conquer witchcraft people is not to do the things that the devil wants to do you cannot fight the devil and at the same time participating with the devil at the same time that that cannot work that cannot work i know many people they always they always tend to hide from this when it comes to deliverance they, they, they always tend to hide from this when it comes to their spiritual warfare because they love sin sin is sweet the flesh loves sin and we're in the flesh and the flesh is constantly warring against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh so the flesh does not want to hear this your flesh don't want to hear this because your flesh want to continue to masturbate your flesh want to continue to, to fornicate your flesh want to continue to smoke your flesh want to continue to do all these things that are pleasurable to the flesh but the flesh only leads to death the flesh only leads to destruction the flesh only leads to you being, being um, fighting a losing battle because you're healing to the flesh and not the spirit so you have to realize you have to forsake your sinful acts if you want full deliverance I'm not saying that prayer will not work because prayer does have their effect. I'm not saying that the name of our Lord does not have the power. It does have the power. But if you are dabbling in your sinful acts, if you're still even out here working witchcraft, the devil is going to eventually conquer you. I'm just being real with you people. I'm just being real. Many of these prophets and these pastors and these evangelists will not be real with you. They will not tell you the real deal. They will tell you about sowing seed and spinning around and upscotching and moonwalking like that can deliver you that cannot deliver you the, um, the main reason why balak and balaam we're going to talk a bit about balak and balaam the main reason why balak and balaam was working witchcraft against israel and it was not working is because the lord says i behold no iniquity in israel that's a very that's a very revolutionary uh, uh that's a very great revelation i should I, I should say to you that's a revelation you know why you know why they couldn't work witchcraft on them they were up in the mountains trying to work witchcraft of israel and they set altar over there they set altar over there they set altar all over the place to try and work witchcraft and they could never curse israel why because the lord said I behold no iniquity in Israel. You have no what? Legal ground. Israel is living for me. Israel is living, is not in iniquity. Israel is not doubling in sin. Israel is living for God. And that's the reason why they could never curse them. And I'm saying this to you today. You have to live for God. Is God beholding any iniquity in you? Because if there's iniquity in you, then that's a legal ground for a Balak and a Balaam to work witchcraft on you I'm telling you young people the reason why these people are conquering you and you're so ambitious is because you're probably dabbling up in sin same way the reason why you're such a hard working young woman and a hard working young man 